Good evening, all. Thank you so much for being with us today. You are currently in the airport design and construction session, 4 p.m. through 5 p.m. PST. Um, great job on making it here today. And we want to kick off the last session of the day um, with Sheree, who will be presenting on the construction opportunities for the Sinu Airport. If you are completely new to our session, since 2015, the Sinu Airport Authority has had these events for Meet the Primes in order for our industry's prime contractors, concessionaires, public agencies, business support services, and our Arsenio Airport Department to network and educate the business community on resources, contract opportunities, and this is in order for you to grow your business, add value, and to elevate it. And with Further ado, I would like to bring to the spotlight Trey, and she will go ahead and move forward with the presentation. Thank you so much, Trey, for being here today. Good afternoon. Thank you, Christine. Uh, I believe I was on mute. Uh, I think you can hear me now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shohre Veladi with Airport Design and Construction, uh, San Diego County Regional Airport Authority. And I'm here to present our capital improvement program. Uh, what you see in front of you is, of course, uh, the, the map of the airport and uh, all colorful boxes that represent projects. Uh, uh, as you probably know, when, we, when the COVID-19 hit, in order to stay in alignment with, other, with our financial resiliency plan, uh, we put some of our projects on hold. Uh, with that, uh, we pushed some of our projects uh, to the almost end of our uh, five-year fiscal uh, plan. Uh, and uh, what you see here reflects that. Uh, when I show you the projects that says on hold, it means that they have just been pushed back. Uh, the projects that were on in construction, uh, they, uh, we, they did not go on hold. Uh, projects that were close to completion of design. We said we're going to complete the design and then put them on hold. And only projects that we felt they were critical for our operations, uh, they continued. With that, the status of our projects here right now, we have 21 active projects and 19 on hold. What you see here in all different colors, uh, uh, Projects in planning phase are in purple, schematic design phase are in blue, uh, design and bid phase, they're in green, and projects in construction are in uh, pink. Uh, so in addition to projects you see here, of course, we have our, okay, let's see if this thing working. So in addition uh, to uh, what I showed you before, of course, we have our uh, ADP, the three, uh, $3 billion uh, project. In addition to our 0.7, it makes our CIP program um, a 3.7 billion uh, word program. Uh, what you see here, uh, I'm sorry about this, okay. Uh, so there, uh, there are three components to our ADP. Um, the first one includes the terminal and roadways uh, and the parking plaza in colors uh, blue, green, and orange. The second component is the airside improvements, which is a design bid build project. The first one is design build. The second one is design bid build. And the third one, administration building in yellow, which is also a design build project. Uh, 
that the ADP terminal and roadways, uh, which includes also the parking plaza, uh, the, uh, in January of 2020, we had the board approval on the ADP budget. In September, we went to board uh, and we got uh, uh, approval for uh, for a design builder, Turner Flatter Iron to start the validation phase of the ADP. Upcoming major milestones are we expect to go to board requesting approval of maximum contract price in summer of 2021. And uh, we expect construction uh, completion for the first 19 gates uh, about end of 2024 or beginning of 2025. The second component of ADP is uh, airside improvements, which as I mentioned is a design big build project. Uh, we, have, uh, we have completed the schematic design um, and um, we are going through coordinations with the rest of ADP and upcoming ma major milestones are we expect design to be completed and start uh, the bid advertisements um, summer of uh, spring of uh, 2021. And the construction is planned to be starting late 2021 and completing in 2028. This is, of course, all pending the final environmental approvals uh, to stay on this schedule. Then the last component of our ADP is the administration building, which is a design build project. Uh, we just completed the bridging documents and the RFP is going to be issued to shortlist um, in November 2020. We expect to go to board in May or June of 2021. Uh, and we expect the selected design build contractor to begin subcontracting procurements late 2021, early 2022. Construction accordingly is planned for early 22 to summer of 2023. And of course, this is all pending final environmental approvals. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the rest of the CIP today and I've uh, grouped them in, in phases. In the planning phase, we have uh, the pavement management program. Uh, the budget that I have on all these slides are the board approved budgets. And um, the schedule is also uh, a planned schedule. So uh, I'm gonna go quickly over these slides as we I have a lot of slides to share with you. So I'm gonna try to take less than a minute on each slide, even, even less. So um, the pavement management program um, is a study and it, uh, it's an analysis of airfield and landside pavement. And it's going to go through the condition assessment uh, and remaining useful life of the uh, airside and landside pavements. This is another study project, perimeter fence and pits master plan, um, budget about uh, 500,000. Uh, in this project is going to go over existing conditions um, and uh, prepare a report. And the master plan is going to be uh, completed in December of this year. Parking revenue control system. Uh, this project uh, is one of the projects that stayed alive. Uh, it didn't go on, on hold, but uh, it reduced the scope. Uh, parking and revenue control system uh, is on schedule. We are in planning phase. And uh, 
it includes the ski data server upgrade, hub server upgrade, and complete parking study. Moving on to schematic design, starting from our tenant improvement program. This is an overall view of our uh, TI program. Um, again, we have some projects on the TI side put on hold, nine projects on hold, which are in um, orange color. The rest of them, we have um, 29 of them active and uh, they are all shown as uh, they're color coded. Projects that are in design review are in green, uh, the ones in construction in pink, the ones in closeout in yellow. Some of the biggest uh, tenant improvement projects, one of them is the uh, sand fuel company additional fuel tanks on the north side this uh, this project has just started construction and is planned to be completed in February of 2022. Uh, it will add three fuel storage tanks on the north side and next to the existing two. Um, and um, it's on its way. Here you see a, a photo including the uh, the three fuel tanks, the way they're going to look like uh, after they're done. So another uh, tenant improvement project is Clear Channel Airport Advertising. Uh, this project is installing uh, the new advertising equipment throughout the airport and the construction is almost complete. Another one of our um, tenant improvement project. Uh, so if you remember, if, uh, if you know our airport, uh, we just uh, completed ASB, airport support building uh, on the south side and, and the interior build outs are all tenant improvement projects. Uh, this one of them, Southwest uh, is nicely moving forward uh, the plans are at the city for plan check and the construction is planned to start uh, in December. Right next to Southwest, we have United Airlines the, in the same building. They're also moving along very well. Um, the 90% was submitted and is under review and it's moving forward. The next two spaces are American and Delta, um, also going through design. This is uh, based on the 30% of American airline uh, build out at airport support building. This is another one of our tenant improvement projects, sand fuel truck rack demo and line replace, replacement. Uh, so the existing fuel truck rack is, uh, is located in the footprint of our new Terminal 1. Mm, a new fuel truck rack is being built uh, on the east side. And this one is going to be demoed. And then at the same time, uh, the, the pipe going underneath the runway is going to be replaced. This project is at 60% design right now. Okay, now going back to CIP projects. Um, under schematic design, this project is on hold enhanced generator reliability. Um, so this project was the study was completed and some installation uh, was uh, was also uh, uh, studied, and um, we know that um, this this project is on hold and it's going to come back to life, uh, but not anytime soon. 
projects on the design and bid phase. Uh, okay, this is one of them, Terminal 2 East roof hydronic pipe installation. This project is going to replace all the installation of our hydronic pipes on the roof of Terminal 2 East. Uh, right now is moving forward uh, to 100% uh, design, which is going to be in December. And um, it's one of the projects that we, uh, we kept going. Uh, we did not put it on hold. It's a $2.2 million project. Right after that, after we replaced the Insulations of those hydronic pipes. Uh, we're going to start the constru construction of this project, which is a the Terminal Two East roof replacement. So this project uh, was in design, uh, and uh, we postponed the construction of it to after replacement of the pipe insulations. Um, it's going to install new liquid membrane to existing roof. It's a $6.5 million project and the construction is planned to be uh, starting next December for about a year. Project Rehabilitate Cross Taxiway C2, C5 and D, $5.9 million project. Uh, this project is going to um, it, it's going to do the asphalt milling and overlay of cross taxiways C2, C5, and D. Uh, work is going to be done during nighttime, and the construction is planned to be uh, starting soon and go all the way to spring of 2021. This project is uh, put on hold. Um, it's GITS, gate information displays, $1.9 million project. Uh, we completed the design 200% and we put it on hold. Passenger boarding bridges refurbishments. Uh, this project is also put on hold. Um, and um, it's a $16.8 million project for Terminal 2 East and West. Now there's another component of the passenger boarding bridges refurbishment that is not put on hold and it's this one. It's gonna go out for adver advertisement pretty soon. Uh, this one is gonna refurbish the passenger boarding bridges in Terminal 1. Terminal 1 East and West uh, for $2.5 million project. Uh, it's going to be advertised soon and the construction is planned to start in April and end in summer of 2021. White in Sassafras Street, $5.6 million project is in design and uh, the plan is to start construction uh, summer of 2021 and end it uh, around February of 2022. This refueler loading facility. So this is the project I was talking about before. Uh, so before the replacement or, or removal, demolition of the current um, fuel rack starts, uh, we're going to complete this other project that is building um, uh, new fuel racks on the east side and it's going to be completely commissioned and operational before we uh, go to construction with the removal of the existing one. It's a $14.1 million project. It was advertised and uh, it, the bids were opened and pretty soon is going to go to board uh, requesting a board of contract. 
Terminal 2 East Electrical Modernization. Uh, this project is going to uh, modernize the main switchboard, replace uh, downstream electrical equipment, and also is going to expand the electrical room. And in association with that, uh, it's going to be uh, uh, some provisions for ATO break room, which is next to this electrical room. It's a 9.8 million dollar project uh, is in design and the plan is uh, to take it to construction April of 2021. Runway electrical vault upgrade is in design and bed phase is a $1.3 million project. Uh, it's gonna uh, replace existing lighting regulators and install fire suppression system at our electrical vault. Now, the plan is to take it to construction September of 2021 uh, for about uh, a little less than a year. Our T2 West Crosswalk Improvements Project went on hold. Uh, the 100% design was completed and the project was put on hold. A modernized baggage handling system at Terminal 2 East. This is another project that uh, would complete 100% design and is going to be um, placed on hold. It's a $15.9 million project. <laughs> East Solid and Liquid Waste Facility. Um, this project is, um, is was bid with the East Fuel Rack Facility uh, and is ready to go to board uh, requesting award of contract is a $26.1 million project. And the plan is, um, I'm sorry, this is the East one. Uh, I made a mistake. So the West Solid Liquid Waste Facility uh, is going to construction now and together with the West Fuel Rack Facility. This is, uh, this is the East Solid Liquid Waste Facility. Uh, this is the location for it. So the, our solid and liquid waste facility uh, was divided in two parts. Um, one of them on the east side of the airport, the other one on the west side. And um, this is the next one that uh, right now is going through design. And um, around March is going to start wrapping up the design and go for plan check. So the plan is to start uh, the construction of this one after the lease turn season, which is around September uh, in 2021, and it will take about a year of construction. And uh, this is a $26 million project. So this is the one I was talking about before. The West Solid Waste uh, is a nine point four million dollar project and this is the one that went to bed uh, together with the fuel rack and it's going to board for award of contract soon and the construction is going to start uh, in December of this year next month and it's going to go for about a year. T2 West crosswalk improvements uh, this one was also put on hold. The design was completed and the project is put on hold. Another sidewalk project, 100% uh, design complete and placed on hold. Uh, so this one here is a architectural project. Uh, it's going to remodel Terminal 2 East for relocation of our ACO and HPD departments. And um, is um, 
moving towards 100% design uh, in order for us to uh, demo the admin building, uh, we need to relocate our ACO. Uh, so um, it's moving forward. It's one of our critical projects. Uh, it's going to complete design and the construction timeline is April of 2021 till October. ARF building HVAC improvements, uh, $780,000 project. Um, the scope comes with the name. We're going to replace the HVAC system on the roof of our ARF building. Uh, this is also planned to go to construction in May uh, until December of 2021. Shuttle lot relocation project. There's another one of the our relocation projects is going to relocate RCC bus and ACE shuttles, which right now their current um, operations is um, is in conflict with the Terminal One replacement project. Um, this is under design, and uh, uh, the budget for this project is. 10.7 million. The plan is to start construction in April of 2021 and complete December. Okay, that was about it for the projects under design. Now we're going to move to construction phase. As I mentioned, most of our projects in construction did not go on hold, uh, therefore decided that to, to uh, complete them. Is one of them battery energy storage system. This is a uh, $641,000 project is in construction and is near com completion. Rehabilitate apron pavement. Is also in construction, it started in July and is going to complete in May of 2021. Uh, this project repairs, um, uh, 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 provides repairs uh, on the Terminal 2 East apron based on the condition assessment and rehabilitate the joint ceiling removals. Um, and resealing and repairs. So that project is also in construction. Upgrade energy mass arresting system, $15.6 million project. Uh, this, this project is going to remove the EMAS uh, and um, replace it with a um, the latest uh, version of EMAS and is in construction, is planned to complete in May of 2021. Hydrant fueling infrastructure project. So this is almost uh, complete as well. Uh, this project is, is um, was substantially completed in August and is near completion this month actually is going to be completed and um, after we build the fuel rack here this is going to be also connected and uh, operational um, before we remove the current fuel rack here this is all part of a uh, a master plan These are uh, photos during construction. AFSIC network redesign is a $13 million project which is in construction and uh, it will be in construction for almost another year. Um, this project, um, um, Assess it, uh, did the assessment of the current condition 
in uh, procurement of uh, new equipment. Uh, so this is um, moving forward. SDIA common use, $13.8 million project. And this is uh, in construction and will be in construction for another year. Northside utility infrastructure. This project um, is a design build project, 8.65 million. Uh, part of the scope of this project is already implemented and that was providing a new water line to ARF, uh, CRDC fuel farm and ATC tower. The rest of the project uh, that could wait has been put on hold. Airport support facilities. This is uh, Actually, the biggest uh, project we have uh, we have right now and is completing construction. Um, there are several components to this project. Uh, so one is uh, the re relocation our facilities management department. Uh, it's shown in blue. Facilities management department was on the south side of the uh, runway. Uh, we just moved them to the north side, and this is their new facility. Next to the FMD uh, is a, a stormwater capture and reuse facility, three million gallon tank underground that was built. Um, another component of this project is the one we just talked about is the airport support, support building. Uh, it's shown in green uh, and replacement of uh, gate P18 next to it. Uh, another component of the project was um, relocation of the AFO, airport fueling operations. Uh, it's shown in orange. Uh, so most of these components of the project have reached sub substantial completion. And um, we are, some of them are actually uh, reaching final completion. These are the three locations and this photo was taken during construction. As you see, the number one is the uh, building for our facilities management department and the underground stormwater tank, number two is the AFO, and number three is the ASB building. This is a photo of the uh, FMD campus, the new campus, and of course the underground uh, tank already completed. This is the construction progress photo, FMD administration building. These are actually photos, they're not uh, renderings. Inside of the FMD administration building, uh, FMD shops and warehouses. And this is inside of the shops. These photos were taken during construction again. This was beginning of January, our uh, 3 million gallon stormwater tank was a hole in the ground. In October of 2020, uh, it's completely covered. Photos during construction related to stormwater, uh, stormwater tank. Uh, 
Uh, this is the photo and the location of AFO. And this is the facility. Of course, this is a, a rendering. That was the early concept. And this is the building. Okay. Now this is a rendering on ASP, Airport Support Building that uh, you mentioned is gonna be handed to the airlines in December for interior build outs. Um, these are photos during construction. And this is, this is the building over there. You can also see on this photo, the FMD, the underground tank, AFO and ASV. We have some of our projects are in close out. And with that, if there is any questions, I'm here to answer, if I can. Thank you, Sheree, for a great presentation now. Um, we do have a question. They wanted you to go back to a slide and, and I was trying to see what number you have, but I couldn't. So can we go back maybe three or four slides before FMD, before the FMD building? They would like the best project, B-E-S-S, -S, to specify. What is that, I'm sorry? The BESS project is the specified project. Yes. Okay. So, okay, let's go to the project. Mm. Okay, let me take the construction projects, design bid. Yeah, it was under construction. Yeah, construction there. Okay. Can you just leave it up for a few minutes? Maybe they oh. can take a snapshot. I'm not sure what. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we do have a question. They want to know when would the PMCM contracts be bid out for these specific projects? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat for, for which project? For any of these projects, when would the PMCM contracts be bid out? When they're so, going to be bid out? Yes, so I guess when are you going to be looking for the PMCMs? PMCM. Uh, so the PMCM is 
Uh, yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll take that, that question, Maria. Uh, so the PMCM oversight is usually provided by our on-call program management company. Um, and right now our program management company is AECOM and they have a contract for seven years for with us. Um, so if, uh, the, if there is any need for PMCM oversight in addition to what we have right now, uh, AECOM provides us with uh, staff augmentation. Is that, uh, did I answer the question or you're asking when I, we're gonna go out for PMCM on call? No, I th if you answer the question for these okay. projects. So AECON, we actually had them on last week. They presented on Thursday at 9.30. So for whoever's interested, we are gonna be posting the recordings. So you could go ahead and look for that specific recording from AECON from Thursday, and you could view it and be able to get their contact information and they will be able to help you with that. Um, I have another question. Is the admin building a design build? Design bid build. Uh, so admin building is a design build project. Uh, let me go back to that. Uh, from the three components of our ADP, um, two of them are design build, and another one is design bid build. Uh, so admin building is design build, and they've. Uh, which is the last one. The first one, terminal and roadways and the parking plaza is, um, is a design build. And the only one that is designed bed built is airside improvements. Great, thank you. We do have another question. Is there a list of upcoming or planned projects that are still in pre-design phase? Uh, meaning in planning phase, right? Um, pre-design, pre-design phase. Is there a list that your department has? Mm -hmm. So let me, let me explain. So the way we, uh, the way we uh, put together the projects uh, here, I know pre-design is used a lot in the industry. Uh, here at the airport, uh, what we do on a yearly basis, we go out and um, ask our stakeholders if there is any project that we have to make part of our capital improvement program. So uh, at that point, we start uh, working on a programming uh, uh, documents. Uh, we work with our stakeholders. We find out what is it that exactly needs to be done. We put together the scope, budget, and schedule. And um, uh, around March, April, uh, we, uh, we adjust our program, the five-year program. Uh, with that, on the current projects, we, we look at the, at the current projects and we see if we have to add any, uh, take some out. And also we look at these new proposed projects and we add them to the uh, five-year program. We take them to the board, we get approval, and then they, they start the planning phase. So we call them programming phase and planning phase. With that said, this year, um, around March, April, when we were putting together the five-year program, COVID-19 hit. And, um, and we, as, as I mentioned, uh, we put about uh, a lot of our projects, about $170 million worth of current projects at that time, and about 50 million of the proposed projects, which uh, they had gone through 
programming and they were going to go to planning. For a total of 220 million, uh, we put them on hold. Uh, now here in my presentation, you saw some of them. Um, we have a total of about 19 projects on hold. Um, and um, um, and uh, as, we, uh, as we prepare our next uh, fiscal year program, we're going to look at the new proposals. We have a few requests for new projects. And we're also going to look at the projects we have placed on hold and see uh, based on the need and based on, our, of course, uh, financial situation. We're going to see if we can bring any of them back and make them part of our capital improvement program. So it sounds like that you will be reviewing all those projects that are on hold and then see how our budget is and then release some of those projects. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. There is another question. Um, what if any uh, DBE requirements are on any of these projects? I'm sorry, what requirements? DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Requirements. Do we, okay. what, if any? And yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, Maria, I think you can answer that question better than I do. Uh, you know, we, we for, for uh, just, just very briefly, I wanna mention that for every, every one of our capital improvement projects, we do have a goal of uh, go, go to reach as far as the, uh, the, uh, uh, the participations. Um, and Maria, if you or your team would like to add to that. Absolutely. So there is anytime we have any federal funds that apply to these projects, we will go ahead and set a DBE goal on projects that are non, but non fund non-federal funded, we will um, apply a policy that we have, which is a 5.12, which covers local, small, and veteran. And that is part of our um, proposed for any of our projects. And what we do with these larger projects, we have them fall into an inclusionary plan and what that is, is that we have our prime contractor tell us what they will be achieving on any of those buckets. Now, the contractor might have different buckets that they want to track, and they will go ahead and follow or pursue those type of businesses. But for us, it's, um, it's the small, the local, um, the veteran, and the DBE. We also um, want to make sure that everybody knows that we have a local certification that is just pertaining to the airport. You go into our Planet Bids portal and that's where you could go ahead and apply for that. Um, it's very easy, um, not, not a lot of information, but if you do have any questions, reach out to our team and then also, it's, um, it's processed within two to three weeks. And what's, happen what's gonna happen is for any of these projects that are gonna start at the airport, that you will have to have that local certification to be able to be counted as the local, in the local bucket. Let me see if there is any other questions. Um, I think there's kind of conversation going back and forth. So I'm trying to figure out which one's a question, which one is not. So sorry, I apologize. Um, and I think we covered every, every question, Christine. Um, do you want to make sure that all the questions are co were covered? Sure, I can also interject and um, 
just to reiterate what I put in the group chat, just so everyone that didn't get a chance to read and just to understand. Um, so the overall disadvantaged business enterprise goal for Bicentennial Airport is 9%. That's our triennial goal. And should there be any additional grants that we receive within that three years, we would modify and revise this goal and submit it to FAA for their approval. So um, in my response, the goal period for federal fiscal year 2020 through 2022 is from October 1st, 2019 and end September 30th, 2022. So um, we do have a mixture of funds for say our airport development plan and terminal one expansion. So because of that mixture of funds, um, there is the encouragement for the prime to utilize and seek CBE firms. And if they find any that are qualified small minority businesses, our team um, certifies for DBE and Maria is the um, one that processes certification. So as long as that firm is in San Diego County or if they're um, in reasonable driving distance, during this time during COVID, we've received guidance from Department of Transportation and FAA that regardless of the circumstances, we must continue certifying for DBE and ACB. So um, if you're not aware, the two-step part is one, um, Step one would be filling out the application, personal net worth to make sure that you do not, um, you do not, uh, you're not above the P and W personal net worth, and you're not above the gross receipts. So 1.32 million is the P and W, and then 23 million is the gross receipts. Um, the P and W excludes your residence, and so um, that's the first part to get all the information. And then the second part is an on-site. Um, typically, pre-COVID, Maria would drive to the principal place of business of the applicant, and she will interview, sit down, and have about an hour and a half interview, and then um, see all your equipment, your facility, see your operations, and then um, she would write a recommendation. So during this time, we have the alternative method of using um, the virtual options, whether it be FaceTime, Zoom, so that you could show her your um, principal place of business. So if you happen to be a small minority business and meet that criteria and also meet the Small Business Administration side standards, um, please reach out to Maria um, or myself to get that started. Um, and we will do our best to process it as soon as possible to make sure that um, you are certified and can qualify for a project since there's um, DB participation um, for certain projects. Yeah. And also make sure that if you're interested in bidding any of the work and you're trying to get your local certification, you also reach out to us and let us know. Okay. I see a question from Ryan, 1.32 million is the threshold for which financial data SBE? The $1.32 million personal net worth, that is for the disadvantaged business enterprise certification. And that could apply for ACDB as well. It's the same PNW threshold. SBE, that's different. Um, that would be the Department of General Services through the state of California. They have three different tiers of small business certification. They have the micro small business, um, just small business and they recently within the last I want to say about year and a half there's one more tier above where it's called SBPW small business for public work and so um, the SBE those three certifications through the state of California DGS is acceptable for the new airport projects um, to count for preference and for the inclusionary projects when there's a specific goal um, Maria meets one-on-one -on -one with all the prime contractors of including your projects to track the, the participation from beginning to end when every single sub has been finally paid out. Great question. I think that- We have a question. I got another question just now directed uh, privately to me. 
What is the typical turnaround time to receive SBE certification through CUCP program? Um, so for clarification, um, SBE is not the certification that we certify through the California Unified Certification Program, that's DBE. SBE is administered by the State of California Department of General Services. Um, I can look for that right now. Let me add it to the Q&A box. This is the DGE website. Um, you can go there, and if you click on Quick Link, um, the little tabs on the top, it will give you a breakout of the requirements. So that's for SBE, the link I just include right there for Department of General Services. If we are talking about the turnaround time for DBE, um, per federal regulations, it needs to be turned around once your application is complete. Um, Rhea, would you confirm that that is 30 days or 60 days? Because um, you're, you're involved with that. It's still 90 days. So okay, once 90. you get a complete, <laughs> a complete application, it has to be completed in 90 days. Yeah, and then if you let us know that there's a specific project, a timeline, we will push it as best as we can. We do have, um, we have external resources that we can lean towards to help us should we have an onslaught of certifications and need to get that to you because that is important to you and we will make that important to us to process it with you letting us know the priority and timeline. So let us know and we'll be transparent as long as you are too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so there's many certifying California California Unified Certification Program certifying agencies. We happen to be the only one in San Diego. Um, and yes, yeah, so LA Metro, Los Angeles World Airport, they are towards LA. And then if we move up north, there's SFO and um, many other entities. So there's about 12 to 13 of us where we work together to um, discuss on certification matters, any updates on regulations, um, guidance from SA and DOT, and to make sure that we can um, address any issues that DBEs or applicants have towards the application process to, and to better that, that whole process that they have. All right, it looks like we are down to our final 60 seconds or minutes to this presentation. So I want to go ahead and close out this session and thank Sheree for your time, commitment, and preparation towards this session. It's valuable for everyone to learn about our upcoming projects and for them to know what is there in the pipeline because we want to share that with you so you can set yourself up for success, have the resources and staff for that. Um, and so thank you very much to also our support team, um, Irma, Annie, Jose, Maria as my partner in crime with this whole Meet the Prince event. We have one final day tomorrow. Um, we have two last sessions. We have public agency panel and also three business support services that will give presentations on them being the bridge to government contracting, providing counseling and helping businesses any way possible. So that's a complete free program, both PTAC and SBDC. Um, and then the newest company that we wanted to have part of our program is business incentive credits. So that's a great way for businesses to learn about money that they actually could qualify for, but they didn't even know about. So definitely tune in to these two last sessions. We will not um, have any Meet the Prime sessions for the rest of this year. It's a one-time thing um, until hopefully next year when we put this all together, whether it be in person and virtually. So want to thank everyone for your time, attention, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Go vote if you haven't done so. We've got final hours to put in those ballots, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, and take care. Bye-bye.